Welcome again to our recorded discussion. So our topic is exclusion from gross income. I'm your discussant, Professor Rebecca R. McKinney. Exclusion from gross income. The following items shall not be included in gross income and shall be exempt from income tax. So we have seven. First is proceeds of life insurance. Second is amount received by insured as return of premium. Third, gifts, bequests, and devices. Fourth, compensation for injuries or sickness. Fifth, income exempt under treaty. Sixth, retirement benefits, pensions, gratuities, etc. Seven, miscellaneous income. We have income derived from far by foreign government, income derived by the government or its political subdivision, prizes and awards, prizes and awards in sports competition, person month pay and other benefits, GSIS, SSS, Medicare, and other contributions, gains from the sale of bonds, debentures, or other certificate of indebtedness, and gains from redemption of shares in mutual fund. Okay, so we have here proceeds of life insurance. So this refers to the amount received by the heirs covering the life insurance. So as a general rule, these are exempt from tax because it is a mere reimbursement for the loss of life. But there are some exemptions. Um, they are taxable when the insured outlived the policy and the amounts corresponding to the return okay, of premium are not taxable, while the amount in excess are taxable. And then when the beneficiary is the insured himself, subject to state tax. When the life insurance is transferable to another person with consideration, the proceeds that exceeds the consideration made are taxable. And also the interest earned in the insurance policy are taxable. So as illustration, we have here, Ella is insured in a 2 million life insurance policy with an annual premium payment of 25,000 up to 10 years. 10 times 25, that is 250,000. Okay, that's their premium no? and for 10 years. If Alberto outlived the policy after the 10th year, he will be paid a 1 million maturity value. So first scenario. Ella died on the 8th year of coverage and his heirs collected the 2 million proceeds. So take note, uh, hindi pa umabot yung 10 years, no? So the entire proceeds of 2 million is not taxable. Okay, because this is insurance on the account of the loss of life. So it is general rule, it is not taxable. Second scenario, upon the death of Ella, the insurance company negotiated for an extension of the payment of the proceeds, wherein the insurance company shall pay two million fifty thousand on the extended time. Okay, the two million proceeds will not be taxable, of course, but the fifty thousand excess is taxable, representing interest. Okay, third scenario: If Ella outlived the policy and collected the maturity value of one million, okay. So, you will only tax uh, the return on capital from that 1 million maturity. So, we have uh, return of premium, your pay, premium payment, which is 25,000 times 10, 250. So, there is a return on capital, which is taxable, uh, part of the basic tax, 750,000. Fourth scenario, after six years of payment, uh, Ellen assigned the pal Ella assigned the policy to Jenna, who paid him 250000 Then Jenna continued the premium payment for two years, after which Ella died. Jenna collected the $2 million insurance proceeds. So the assignment policy of 250000 resulted into 150000 return of premium. So we have... 25,000 after 6 years of payment times 6, so 150. So there is return on capital which is 100,000 and that is taxable. Okay. How about property insurance contracts? 
So, for property insurance contracts, usually the excess of tax basis of the property lost or destroyed is taxable. Okay? So, yung maklaim na insurance minus the tax base at the property loss, the cost or value of the property loss, so any excess of it is taxable. Okay? So, exclusion also for the income tax are the gifts, bequests, and devices. They are not subject to income tax. What is gift? It refers to something given for free or without any consideration. They are subject to donor's tax, but not on the income tax. Bequest is subject to estate tax because this is transferred of personal property to another person by will. And we have also device, subject also for estate tax, not for income tax. And device is refers to transferred real property to another person by will. Okay, so compensation for injuries or sickness. This refers to amounts received from accidents, personal injuries or sickness, through health insurance or under workmen's compensation acts plus any damages received. They are not taxable except for injuries from damages for loss of earnings. Take note, taxable only for, uh, they are not taxable except no, for injuries from damages for loss of earnings in property, compensatory damages and payment for interest on non-taxable damages. Okay, as an illustration, Joss was hit by a jeepney, spent three months in the hospital and paid $150,000 for hospitalization expenses. And then he sued the jeepney driver and was awarded by a court a total indemnity of $350,000 divided as follows. $180,000 indemnity for his pain, anguish, and suffering, $70,000 for his loss of salaries, and $100,000 as reimbursement for his hospital bills. So only the $70,000 loss of salary is taxable. Other than that, they are not taxable. Next, retirement benefits, pensions, gratuities, etc. Retirement benefits are those received by officials and employees of private firms, whether individual or corporate, under Republic Act 7641 in accordance with a reasonable private benefit plan maintained by the employer, provided that they have been in the service of the same employer for at least 10 years, at least 50 years of age at the time of the retirement, and the benefits granted are availed only once. So, meaning to say they will be exempted if those uh, are, uh, situation are uh, achieved. No? So, let's look on the illustration. Jero was employed in 1999 when she was 25 years old. In 2019, she availed of the early retirement program of her, her employer. So, let us compute how many years. So, 1999, 2019. So, this is... Um, 20 years. So, meaning na-achieve yung 10 years. But look on the age. So, 25 years old at that time. So, plus 20. So, only she, uh, she is only 45. So, hindi na-achieve yung number 2. So, therefore, it is taxable. Okay, next. Assume that Chera joined another employer and worked in it, therein for 8 more years after which she, she retired from her employment. So, 45 years old naman siya, no? So, plus, plus 8, meaning lampas na ng 50. Okay, but dapat 10 years. So, meaning that is taxable. Next illustration, assume instead that Chera was 30 years old when she was joined her first employer and worked therein for 20 years after which she retired at 50. She immediately joined another employer and retired after 10 years of service when she was 60 years old. So, only the first retirement is non-taxable. But the second is taxable because of the uh, kailangan isa lang, kasa lang siya na, 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 na avail. Okay? So, first retirement lang. Next, separation or termination. Generally, not taxable if... Take note, not taxable if it is due to sickness, death, or other physical and mental disability due to any causes beyond its control such as redundancy, retrenchment, closure of employer's business, employee layoff, downsizing of employer's business, sickness, or death of employee. So, let's look on our illustration. Jessa is an employee of JG Company which retired this company during the year. 
Okay? So, just uh, last page, paycheck shows the following detail. So, there is unpaid salary of the last two months, current monthly salary, the separation pay, and the total pay of 160000 So, which of these is not taxable? So, only the separation pay. Because, um, ano man, di ba? Si JG Company, nag-retirement. So, there is lay off no during that year so dili siya voluntary so yung taxable only is uh yung not taxable only is the separation pay but the rest they are subject for uh tax no basic tax uh, compensation income next illustration zella's employer was downsizing its business operations zella was one of the others to be laid off to avoid implications of inefficiencies on our part zella filed Voluntary resignation, ito, no? Receive a separation pay of 150000 Since this is voluntary resignation, so the separation fee is taxable kasi within the control of the employee. Okay, next. Social security benefits, retirement, gratuities, pensions, and other similar benefits received by resident or non-resident citizens of the Philippines or aliens who come to settle permanently in the Philippines or we say resident alien no, from foreign government agencies and other institutions, private or public. So, payments of benefits due or to become due to any person residing in the Philippines administered by the USVA, the United States Veterans Administration under the laws of the United States. So, anong sabi dito? Any received benefits or enjoyed under the SSS in accordance with the provisions of Republic Act No. 8282 and any benefits received from GSIS under Republic Act No. 8291 including retirement gratuities received by government officials and employees, they are not taxable. Okay, next. Miscellaneous income no, of the tax code. So, income derived from investment in the Philippines in loans, tax, bonds, or other domestic securities or from interest on deposit in banks in the Philippines derived by foreign governments from financing institution owned, controlled, or enjoyed, enjoying refinancing from foreign government and international or regional financing institution established by foreign governments and also income derived from public utility or from ex exercise of any essential government function accruing the government of the Philippines or to any political subdivision thereof they are not taxable okay. how about prizes and awards no made primarily in recognition of religious charitable scientific educational artistic literary Rary or civic achievement. So, this is all still miscellaneous income that are not taxable, but only if first the recipient was selected without any action on his part to enter the contest or proceeding. The recipient is not required to render substantial future services as condition to receiving the prize or award. And all prizes and awards granted to athletes in local and international sports competition and tournaments, whether held in the Philippines or abroad, and sanctions by international sport association. So, they are not taxable. Next, the gross benefits from 13-month pay and other benefits received by officials and employees of public and private entities up to the extent of 90000 is not also taxable. The GSIS, SSS, Medicare, and Pag-ibig contributions and union dues of individuals, the gains realized from the sale or exchange or retirement of bonds, debentures, or other certificate of indebtedness with a maturity of more than five years, and the gains realized by the investors upon redemption of shares in a mutual fund company as defined in Section 22 BB of this code, they are not taxable. Okay, thank you.